In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this exact HTML page without writing a single line of CSS. So stay tuned to know everything. Hello world, my name is Igor and welcome to my channel. Here you can find coding tutorials just like the one you're about to watch. So if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing and the button below for more. Today's build is just going to be a simple HTML page with styling done by Tailwind CSS. So no CSS was written to achieve what's on this page. Tailwind CSS is a utility-first CSS framework packed with classes that can be composed to build any design directly in your markup. Utility classes help you work within the constraints of a system, making it easy to be consistent with color choices, spacing, and shadows. It facilitates the creation of responsive pages with a simple class prefix, as well as adding styling to hover and focus elements. Among these, there are several other capabilities that make Tailwind CSS the best CSS framework to use in the future, in my opinion. Now, this project is extremely small and all it's going to take is a single index HTML file and the installation of Tailwind CSS through the CDN. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so now we are in the terminal and I'm within a projects folder where I usually keep my projects. So the first step is going to be to create a folder where this project is going to be created at. So I'm going to call it Tailwind CSS Demo. Now if we do an ls, we can see that our folder is right there. I'm going to cd into that folder and I'm going to start VS Code with the folder itself. So this is an empty VS Code project because the folder is empty, right? And our first file, the first and only file we're going to create is going to be named index.html. To make this project easier to develop, we're going to use an extension called Live Server. So if you don't have this, I really highly recommend installing it so that we can see the changes that we are making uh, happen when we save the file. So I already have mine installed. So what I can do now is right click on the index and click open with live server. So now I have this blank page in my Safari browser. I'm going to put this in a two window configuration side by side so we can see the changes as they happen. Now to kick off our file, we can use any of the snippets extension that you have or an Emmet extension. So if I type just an exclamation point, I have an Emmet abbreviation definition. Either of these is okay. And this is gonna generate, let me just close this. This is gonna generate the HTML boilerplate that we need. This title, we can just rename it to Tailwind CSS Demo. This is the name that's going to appear on the tabs, that's the tab name. And now we're going to need to get the Tailwind CDN URL to use their stylings. So let's go to Tailwind CSS website and click on Get Started. They have a menu, we can open it up and go into the get starting section and click on installation. There are a couple of integration guides you can use with frameworks or that any that you might be using and they use post CSS plugin to process the stylings. Since we want to keep this as simple as possible, we are just going to use down below the page, we're going to be using Tailwind via CDN. So if we copy this link and paste it into our HTML head inside the head tag. This is going to be referring to tailwind.min.css. This is now a file that Tailwind gave us with all the styles. You can click on it to check it out. And you can see that it's just a very large file of CSS. Okay, so now we're back on our empty page. I'm going to start adding elements. So the first one is going to be a header the hero section that's going to define initially our index page so this tag is suitable here then I'm going to add an h1 it's going to have all the text that we want it is welcome to tailwind css tailwind css is inside this pen because it's going to have classes of its own to change the color we're going to see that next now we're going to add an h2 so it's the second text we can see 
In the text is going to be, let's learn how you can use Tailwind CSS to create beautiful pages like this one in minutes. After we have the both texts, we need the button to go to the next section. So to define that, we're going to have a div to wrap around the anchor tag that's going to redirect on the href. And if we save all of this, this is our page looks. Okay, so this is normal HTML, no classes have been added yet. Now let's start adding some stylings. So we start off with our header. So we have a couple classes here. And we have text center to center our text in its center, like the name implies. Then we have BG gray 100. It's gonna define the background color of the section has a shade of gray. We have PY 14 for some paddings in the Y axis. H screen is gonna make it fill the entire screen in its height. And then we have flex, flex call and justify center to make the display of this section being a display flex. The direction is gonna be columned and all of the items are gonna be justified to the center. So now if we hit save with these classes, these are the differences that we can expect. So now we have a darker background and we have everything centered on the screen. Now we're gonna style our, our text and the button. So our H1 text, which says, welcome to Tailwind CSS. First gonna style the Tailwind CSS part. So we're just gonna say that text is a shade of blue, that's 500. And it has an underline just for flare. The rest of the H1 is gonna have a font bold and the text is gonna be five extra large. If we save these differences, this is how it looks now. Next step, we're going to add the classes to our H2. So we have a font normal, just to be sure that it is normal font without any type of ornaments. The text is going to be smaller than the H1. It's going to be too extra large. It's going to be a sh different shade. It's going to be gray. It's going to be italic and also it's going to have a margin in the Y axis to separate from the H1 in the button below. So the differences applying these classes. Okay, this is starting to look good. So now we just have to make that text look like a button. So first of all, within the div that we wrapped our anchor tag in, we give it some padding, separate it even a bit more from the text that's around it. Then regarding the anchor tag, we gave it a font bold to make the text, the text bold, change the color to white to make contrasts with the background of the button. All of it is gonna be uppercase to give some different call to action feeling. The background is going to be blue, a shade of 500 blue. The div is going to be rounded to have the, the corners a bit round. And then just a padding of 4 to separate the text from the boundaries of the button. And this is our first section complete. Now all of this can be found in within Tailwind's CSS documentation. They have extremely good documentation. And you can turn to anything here. So if you wanted to know how to make text bold, just search like here for bold. And then we have font bold. And they have all the classes you can use to change the font weight to the one you decided. The same thing for rounded. So border radius, right? Rounded corner. These are all the options. So you have SM, normal rounded, MG, LG. Okay, now back to our project. Okay, so right now if you click the button, it has an, an href to go into a section with an ID of cards. But at the moment, we don't have that section. So the first step is gonna be to create that section with that specific ID. So after we create the section, we need to define the content of that section. First, it's gonna have a title, right? After the title, it needs to have some content. So we're going to wrap that content within a div to have full control of its styling. Now that we are inside a div, we can create a new one to hold the card. So that's going to be the card one. Within the card, we want two parts. We want a part to hold an image, which we're going to use as a source. Pick some photos, so it's going to always render an image with 300 pixels wide and 300 pixels width. We're going to have a new div to wrap around the text we're going to be creating. And then we just can add a, a paragraph and a span with some text inside it. It's going to be Jon Snow and the text is just normal Lauren Ipsum. 
So now let's save and see what this translates to. Okay, so now you can see all of our content is already displayed here. We just need to add a couple of classes. So let's start with our section. So the same way that we did before, our section is gonna have a different shade of gray, just to stand out from the previous one, a couple of paddings in the Y axis, and also it's gonna be the same height, the entire screen to fill the section. It's gonna be display flex, up direction column, and justify center to keep all of the items within the center of the screen. We also added item center to level it in the cross axis. So now into the H3 class, we added a bold font. Text is gonna be five large, and it's gonna have a couple of rams in margin bottom. So now to style the container of the card. So the container of the cards is gonna have a flex display and it's gonna have a full width that justifies center to keep the rows of cards in the center. Then we define the classes that's gonna define the card itself. It's gonna have a background white. It's gonna be rounded on the corners. It's gonna have a width of 33%, so it's a third of its parent. Gonna have a couple of box shadow with shadow XL, a margin of four all around, and it's gonna have a display flex row with all its items on center. The first item of its content is the image itself. It's gonna have a width of 40 rem, and also gonna be rounded except on the right side. And we're gonna see why we did that in a second. The next class added is to the text container. It's gonna have a padding of three all around. The text is gonna be bold also. It's gonna be smaller than the heading itself and it's gonna be of blue. Then for the span, we just had normal size and normal font, a different shade of gray for the color and it's gonna be italic. If we say of all of this, we're gonna have our first card right here. Now let's duplicate this div and see if everything works as expected. But like I said before, this is the container of the row of cards. So this is the row and these are the cards, the container inside the div. So if I want to make a card next to another, since I already have flex displayed on its container, I can just duplicate the inner container I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom row. Now I'm gonna have two rows of cards with two cards each. The images take a little bit to load and this is looking all right. So now we're gonna create a footer and the footer itself has a specific tag, it's called footer, so we can add it first. Once we add the footer, we can start adding the content. Now the first tag is going to be a div because we want a container within the footer to be able to control its width regardless of the outer tag that is the footer. Now we're going to start defining specific columns of the footer itself. First column is going to have a paragraph of support, then an unordered list with three list items inside it's going to be anchor tags. We're going to do the same thing for the second column. And the last column is going to be different. It's going to have two paragraphs with different texts. And then it's going to have a container for an input of type email and an anchor tag to be the button. Now, if we save all of this, okay, so this is what it looks like without stylings. So now let's start adding stylings, starting at the top and going all the way down. So firstly, our footer is going to be flex. It's going to have display of flex. It's going to justify its items on its center. It's going to have a padding on the y-axis of 10 to give a, a lot of spacing between the elements and the footer itself. It's going to have a background of blue 500. All the text inside of it is going to be white and the item center is to align all the columns vertically. Then the div that we are going to use as a container within the footer is also going to have a display flex to be able to display the columns all in a row. It's gonna have a justify around to keep the spacing between the columns, item center to keep them vertically aligned, 
and then a width of 4x5 that if you go to the Tailwind documentation you can see that in the width documentation you have all of these available classes when you want to mess around with percentage of the parent element you go around to these fractions so four fifths is an 80% width so the, con the content inside the footer is going to take 80% of its parent go into each of the columns itself and the container of the column is going to have a flex display it's going to have a direction of column to be on top of each other then each of the titles are going to have a text excel to be kind of larger than the normal paragraph both of them are going to be bold and are going to have an underline going to the list we are adding an utility class for the line height and we are giving it the ninth option meaning that is going to be the line heights are going to be larger the same thing for the letter spacing which in tailwind css is defined by the utility classes of tracking so tracking wider is going to make our text letters be spaced more apart from each other and then we have text lg to make the text a, li a little bit bigger but still smaller than the paragraph above going to the last column we add the same display flex with the column direction we add some stylings to the text messing around with the text size and also the letter spacing and on the last element we give also display flex but with a direction row which is the normal direction to display our input that's going to be rounded with a padding of three and our anchor tag is going to be bold with a white text a black background rounded corners and also the same padding as the input now if you save all of this you can see the final result of our html file starting from the top we have a section that is the entire height of the screen an anchor tag for the card section also the full height of the screen with two rows of cards with two cards each have a footer with three columns evenly spaced so if you go to tailwind css side you can search for anything that you need on your project so the one i commonly search for is border radius you can search here on the top and then you can see all the classes you can use to make to mess around with the parts that you want on your project then on the bottom of it you have a lot of cool examples that they give the classes that they use to build that but that was it for a first introduction to what tailwind is and how to build a simple but yet good looking html page with no css at all only tailwind css and that was it that was our first look at tailwind css which enables you to write beautiful pages without a single line of css now there's still a lot more on tailwind css that we could cover and i'm gonna work on future videos to cover that also with react and other frameworks that they also mention on their platform how to integrate with so if you're interested in seeing that in the future be sure to subscribe to this channel to know more and like this video so i know that people want to see more of tailwind css and until then happy coding